And this just really highlights uh, the skills needs, a summary of the skills needs for the solar PV. Um, if we were to, uh, for the just energy transition, if we were to decommission a number of uh, uh, our plants, uh, what are the different types of um, uh, uh, skills that are going to be required? And they've just identified from design uh, to installation and operation and maintenance. And the key question here for me is, um, which I think in discussion with CSIR was, uh, how much of these uh, uh, jobs are sustainable? Um, and it's a reality. We're not we're not expecting that all the jobs that are going to be created are going to be long term jobs. As you can see, a system design is not an everyday uh, um, a job. Uh, from a project development, that is going to be is a once off. Yes, it's maintained. I mean, it's managed, but it's not once that is done. It's no longer required skill. So mainly, my focus is really around installation, operating, and maintenance. Um, and the question becomes, what's here around this area? What are the critical skills that are required there? And uh, even how many of, um, how many, it's, and I don't want to say technicians, I don't want to only talk to technicians, but how, how many employ, employment opportunities can be created from here? And how do we now look at starting to put together qualifications so that we respond to some of these? Uh, the design and the project development and construction, we also need to look at, do we have the right skills in the country to ensure that we've got um, uh, capacitated and well capable people to look at residential PV system designs? Um, as you can see, we've got power systems engineers that we're going to require, solar energy system designers. Do we have uh, adequate skills? Do we have the right qualifications? And once we've ticked all of those, I think it's important for us as a sector to say which of these qualifications are critical but we don't have. They might exist internationally. How do we localize them? And how do we remove the, the, the backlogs? How do we remove the bottlenecks that prevent us from um, uh, registering qualifications on time so that we are able to respond to the needs on time? Uh, so that's the, the, that's the high level just of the skills need summary and the amount of work that I think we require as a sector to do and to come together as a sector and say, what are the qualifications that we're going to focus on? What we've noticed is that there's a fragmented development of qualifications. Different providers and skills providers will go about mm -hmm. registering mm -hmm. own qualifications. But as a country, we need to really come together so that uh, we get uh, the right qualifications, the right qualities, and that are adequate and to respond to our sector needs. And once we once we've done that, I think it's a uh, it will be easier for us to even improve upon the existing qualifications. Uh, once you've identified those gaps, because once you have the gaps, you're able to say what are the currently existing qualifications and how do we close the gaps within those existing qualifications, or which areas do we really need to start developing um, uh, brand new qualifications? And this can be done also by just taking some of the international. We there are international players who've who've done this. We take the internationally already internationally developed qualifications and we look at how do we localize them um, uh, for South Africa. We do have currently uh, some registered qualifications um, within the uh, solar uh, industry. We've got uh, about three that are currently registered at NQF level six, and some that are this uh, in these last two. Uh, there are already gaps that we've identified and the sector has indicated there are gaps that have been identified here and we need to work together to ensure that they, we speedily close those gaps because there is a current need. It's not a need that is going to realize tomorrow, that is going to be identified tomorrow. It's a current need and we need to close that today. Uh, as a CETA, we are working together with with with, our, with some of our industry partners to ensure that we are closing some of these gaps. And it would be great that uh, we combine our efforts and combine our financial resources and uh, work with the QCTO to ensure that these are, are registered on time. As we've identified some of the skills gap uh, that I've highlighted in the previous slide uh, that was coming from the CSIR analysis, uh, we note that there, there are some uh, skills gap that are identified within the solar PV industry, um, where we said we don't have the mounters, we don't have panel cleaners, we don't have system designers and installers and main maintainers. And we do, in some of these, as you can see, we don't have registered qualifications. Um, 
Uh, some of these just require skills programs to ensure that we capacitate learners. But we need a South Africa to register qualifications because those are some of the documentations that allow people to access to get jobs. Um, we don't want to accredit and qualify some of our uh, uh, students and some of our unemployed people with uh, unregistered qualifications because it's difficult for them to access employment um, without their registered qualifications. Uh, so we are working towards, we need to work as an industry to work towards ensuring that we close these gaps. Um, and as an authority, we are committing to ensuring that uh, through QCTO, we are speedily closing such um, uh, the, these identified gaps. Um, from a, here I'm just going to highlight from a, a public college perspective, our mandate is to ensure that the skills development and we have been tossed through the uh, National Skills Development Plan that we ensure that we are supporting the public college system. As we are developing qualifications, as we are accrediting uh, providers, we need not to leave the um, our TVET colleges behind. You can see only four colleges currently are accredited. Um, and uh, these colleges, uh, out of the many TVET colleges existing in our country, we need to ensure that, and you can see most of these um, we don't have Mpumalanga and we are saying there's going to be a shift that is happening in Mpumalanga. Um, we know that Northern Cape, there's a lot that is happening within Northern Cape. Um, are we looking at ensuring that our college, TVET college systems are responding to such needs um, so that they remain relevant? If we were to call this a just energy transition, um, we shouldn't be leaving those colleges behind. So we do have a lot of work to ensure that industry is working together with our TVET colleges to ensure that we are supporting them when it comes to capacitating them with facilities and training, exposing their lecturers to the workplaces and ensuring that we are developing qualifications and ensuring that we're giving learners in those colleges uh, bursaries so that they are studying in there and responding to specific provincial needs. Um, if we look at the accredited SD SDPs here, we might assume that um, solar is only in these areas. And we know for a fact that we've got um, the needs across our country. So how do we support our public college system? As I indicated, the NSDP, the National Skills Development Plan, requires that we are building our public college system. Um, we do have a strategy, TVET support strategy as EWCTA, where we are looking from qualification development, uh, from uh, capacitating TVET lecturers, and uh, ensuring that giving, as I indicated, ensuring that we are given and awarding bursaries to learners to, to register in those uh, relevant qualifications. So if we were to develop and we were to accredit a number of TVET colleges with uh, solar PV related qualifications, we need to ensure that those accredited qualifications together as industry, we facilitate that the employed and the employers are registering into those uh, courses in the, in the different colleges. We do have center specialization where we are looking at uh, through the Department of Higher Education and Training. We're looking at uh, establishing some centers where we are uh, specializing, I'll just say, for instance, with uh, the solar PV. Uh, how do we ensure that we've got a center of excellence where we know in our country, if we were to even for, for lessons to be learned for other TVET colleges, we have a center that is a fully fledged center that will uh, drive uh, excellence and quality training. Uh, qualification development, which I've already spoken to, and uh, as this is a new, not a growing sector from a solar PV perspective, we need to ensure that we are not training, we are not only training people for employment, but beyond employment, we're also looking at um, entrepreneurship skills so that people can uh, get uh, trained and come up with solutions also and drive, contribute to uh, economic growth of our country through entrepreneurial um, and enterprise development. Um, how do we support our, I think, the e-learning support uh, system? We are developing an e-learning platform. We have developed an e-learning platform. This is just to make ease for uh, some of our TVET colleges and even our public providers who do not have some of the platforms to be able to use our platform to offer uh, training in the space. And as I indicated, we are doing capacity building for college educators uh, to ensure that we've got quality educators um, who will be producing quality students. 
Um, and uh, just high level, we do have a number of strategic uh, interventions and partnerships and collaborations with a number of, of, of universities of technology to ensure that we capacitate our research um, uh, our, our offerings and we capacitate ourselves from a research perspective in the renewable energy space. Uh, we do have a partnership with Central Energy Fund where we are currently training unemployed youth um, in installing solar water heating. Um, it's solar water, I always get it this wrong, solar <laughs> water heating uh, solutions and this is rolled out uh, up, uh, across our country. Uh, we do, we have had renewable energy and when I'm saying renewable energy, I am including solar PV in qualification workshops where in this uh, space we are looking at addressing those issues I've highlighted with regards to the gaps in the qualifications that we are offering in the, the space and uh, even looking at skills programs that can be developed um, to ensure that we are responding to the need. So from a skills development perspective, um, there's a lot that we need to do as industry is not work that can be done by a single entity. Um, it's not work that's not going to be driven by industry alone, it's not going to be driven by colleges alone or a higher education institution alone, but it's the skills development is a responsibility of us as employed, as the employers and as um, uh, skills development providers and um, ensure, to ensure that we are indeed responding to the, our sector skills needs in the solar PV industry.